All right, let's go. A man on board a commercial plane looked out of his window and saw something very strange at the top of a Colorado mountain. When authorities were alerted and sent to that spot on the mountain, they could not believe what they found there. But before we get into Tell today's me, stories, Bollard. if you're Tell a fan me. of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you've come to the right place because that's all we do, and we upload once or twice every week. So if that's of interest yeah, to tell you, me, please invite the like button to participate in your nice casual... <laughs> the like button to participate in your... <laughs> participate in your very fun very casual neighborhood squirt gun fight but then squirt the light <laughs> but then squirt bro he broke character bro squirt them with sulfuric acid. but then squirt the like button with sulfuric acid not water also please subscribe to our channel is he high he does look like he he does look like a, a jabroni he, he might he might Channel smoke the devil's all lettuce. notifications so you don't miss any oh okay thank you i love you give our weekly uploads all right let's get into today's stories joker moment that was kind of a joker laugh like the <laughs> In 2018, a 56-year-old father of four named Tayeb Suyami was living in a quiet, modest town in New Jersey. I swore he said tsunami. Suami, okay. Called Little Ferry. Tayeb had moved to the United States from Africa back in 1996, and after getting settled in New Jersey, he had landed a job as an accountant for a food importing company. At first, Tayeb's salary had been enough to provide for the family, but as his family grew, his salary just wasn't enough and money became a real problem. And so eventually, Tayeb's wife also got a full-time job, but even then, with two full-time working adults, the family had to stay on a very strict budget just to make ends meet. And that year, in 2018... Imagine being poor. In our economy, being poor... Come on. One of Tayeb's daughters was getting ready to go to college, and so Tayeb was forced to refinance his mortgage just to make the initial payments on his child's college bills. But despite his financial struggles, Tayeb did not let it bother him. He was an eternal optimist who fundamentally believed Smart that man. in the end, everything would just work itself out. <laughs> on May 1st of that year, Tayeb... Dude I, dude, I have props to people who think like that. I try to think like that, man. It's hard. I try to think like those people that are like, oh, I know shit's really bad right now, but eventually it'll work out. That's that's the best mindset to have, but it's so hard to keep. Was on his way home from work Poor cringe, when his wife know, right? called him and asked if he would swing by the grocery store and pick up some orange juice. So Tayeb stopped at the ShopRite grocery store in Hackensack, New Jersey, which was only a couple miles north of Little Ferry where they lived. And he went inside, he went to the juice aisle, and he scanned the different brands of Welcome orange juice. Welcome to Julie. At some point, he grabbed the most appealing orange juice that was still within their budget. It was $5. He takes the juice, he goes to the front of the store, he pays for it, he goes outside he hops in his car and he heads home when he, he pulls dies. into his driveway he gets out he goes into the house he goes right into the kitchen where his wife was and, and then he, he dies. proudly set the orange juice down on the kitchen table expecting a thank you from his wife but his wife turned around and she looked at the orange juice and she saw the brand he had purchased oh and she no any any bets here nice shoot thank you zoe is he gonna snap you think he's gonna snap immediately said how much did you pay for that and tayeb said five dollars and she said well you got to take it back because i know that brand is on sale for two dollars and fifty cents at the grocery store right down the road so go return this one and so tayeb was totally annoyed because he just got home from work he thought he had done a good deed and now he's yeah in i'd trouble. be like what the fuck and so he decided you know what i'm not gonna fight her on this he just walked over grabbed the five dollar orange juice and he went back outside hopped in his car and took off a few minutes later, he arrived at the Hackensack, New Jersey ShopRite. He went inside and he went straight to the <laughs> customer service desk where there was a teenager behind the counter and Tayeb walked over to them and he handed- This is like the strangest story so far. <laughs> to be mad over $2.50 that you make him- Dude, you would literally spend $2.50 of the gas to just drive there. You know what I mean? 
to just drive there and drive back. That would have been 250. So it's like, what? <sighs> them the juice along with his receipt and he asked for a refund and so while Tayeb is standing there letting this cashier complete the transaction he looked behind the cashier at the wall and there was this sign that totally piqued his interest and so he's staring at the sign and then finally the teenage cashier he finishes the transaction and he reaches out across the counter with Tayeb's five dollars and Tayeb he reaches out and he takes the five dollars but then he pauses for a second and he's kind of looking up at the sign and he's thinking about what he should do and he knows that if he does this, if he does what the sign is telling him to do, he's going to get in trouble with his wife because this is the exact lottery? opposite of what he was sent out to do. Is, is he going to do the lottery? Do. But Tayeb just couldn't help it. And he takes the $5 and he proceeds to hand it right back to the cashier. And he tells the cashier what he wants him to do with it. And so it's a couple a minutes later, Tayeb leaves the shop right with no juice, with no $5, but two small slips of paper in his back pocket. And so it's Tayeb the lottery, dude. Car and he drives it's the fucking to the lottery. grocery store that's right down the road from their house. He goes inside and he gets the on sale $2.50 bottle of orange juice. And then he goes back into his car. He drives home. He goes in the kitchen and he sets the juice on the counter and tells his wife, yep, I got the right one, $2.50. And he's just hoping the whole time that she has not checked the bank account and has not discovered what he had really been doing while he... Dude, that has got to suck. Like, <clears throat> we're... Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I, I guess if you're like a very... Um, what's the word? Fiscal person? Is, is that the word I'm looking for? Where you care, you know, you focus on budgeting and how much money you spend so in detail that like $2.50 would like, you know, make you mad. But like, even when I was broke as shit, I still was like frugal. There, That's the word I was looking for. But um, I still like didn't pay attention much to what, like I, I knew what I was, I knew that like, oh, we're just gonna buy cheap things. You know, I wasn't thinking, oh, this was more expensive than this. Let's just go back and get a refund and buy the less expensive thing. You know what I mean? I was just always just like, oh, we're just going to buy cheap things and, you know, always be cheap, but not like to the point where it's like that. I don't know. That's crazy. I, I feel like that's just, that would be mentally tra like damaging, I feel like, to live life like that, where you're always on edge was out because he had actually <laughs> spent more money on the second trip than the first time. But apparently his wife had not checked the account yet and she just thanked him for being willing to go out and get the better deal. And so Tayeb very happily left the kitchen and he like spent ramen, the rest of the dude. night you watching I mean? TV and hanging out with his family. And then early the next morning, Tayeb got up and he decided, you know what? I need to do something to curry some favor with my wife because she's gonna learn what I did with the refund money pretty soon. And so he decided he would just go out and do a bunch of yard work that day right in front of his wife to make sure she really saw that he was doing some good stuff and so he goes outside he opens up the garage and I'm he's only about more to pull conscious the about it because I'm in college yeah when he notices there's nothing wrong with being conscious about how much money you have but I feel like that's just too much I feel like that just not be healthy that's true like baking your own stuff saves a shitload of money instead of like Says, his car is really dirty and so he decides you know what i'm gonna go wash my car first and then come back and cut the grass no! and do some other things and so he goes don't inside do it and he tells don't his do wife it. what his plan is and she says okay you know i'll see you in a little bit when you come back from the car wash and then tayeb went back outside he hopped in his car and he left as he was driving to the car wash he made a pit stop at a small store that was set back off is he about to mow over his winning ticket? Don't don't do that. And so he goes inside and he I'd goes be so right sad. to the back of this little store where there's this <laughs> strange machine that looks like an ATM and it has a screen on it. It's a fuck. Just say it, Ballin. Like, I know you're trying to be mysterious. We know what that is. It's a lottery machine. We know. Text scrolling across it. And at the bottom, there was an open. Yeah, exactly. McDonald's be like, here, have a burger for $1, but a salad $8, please. It makes no fucking sense.
happening where a barcode scanner was kind of projecting down. And so Strange Tyra walks machine. up to this machine and he reaches into his back pocket and he pulls out those two slips of paper he had got from the grocery He's gonna store. He's going to win the lottery, the isn't he? Before, and he puts the first one under the scanner and then he reads the text that appears on the screen of this machine. And after strange, reading it, he kind of shrugs his shoulders and machine. puts that piece of paper back in his pocket. <laughs> and then the second slip of paper he puts into the scanner. And then when he reads the words that pop up on the screen, he thinks there's been a mistake because all it says is see receptionist. And so he rescans the second slip of paper to see if something different will happen. But sure enough, again, it just says see receptionist. And so he pulls the second slip of paper out of the scanner. He turns around and he walks to the front of the store and he hands the paper to the woman behind the counter. Over an hour later, Tayeb pulled into his driveway and he sat in his driveway for a second. And he's, he's a millionaire. From what had just happened inside of that small store. And so he gets out of his car, which was still totally dirty. And he made his way into the house and he went straight to the kitchen where his wife was. And so as soon as he gets in the kitchen, his wife turns around and looks at him and says, where were you? The car wash is like five minutes away. Why were you gone for like two hours? But Tayeb, he's got no expression on his face. And he looks at his wife and just says, give me a hundred dollars. And his wife scrunches her face up at him and says, no, where's your money? And Tayeb smiles, he turns around, he reaches into his back pocket, and he pulls out that second slip of paper, and he hands it to his wife, and he says, here's my money. After getting that $5 refund at the shop okay. right in Hackensack, New Jersey, Tayeb noticed a sign on the back wall that, that was advertising lottery. for a Moneyball jackpot lottery. And he had decided to use the $5 refund. Dude, it is insane <clears throat> that uh, if you think about it, how people every day of their lives buy a lottery ticket every day of their lives buy a lottery ticket this dude just gets it one time and wins to buy two lottery tickets and so he buys these two lottery tickets and the next day that store set back off the road he went to was a convenience store a 7-eleven up Joe and Joe? the machine he was using was a machine that scanned your lottery it's tickets such a mysterious a machine and so the first ticket he scanned <laughs> was a dud it didn't win anything but the second it's ticket so he scanned, strange it couldn't process the amount of money he had just won and so that's why it told him to see the receptionist and so he brought the second ticket up to the counter he handed it to the woman and after she scanned it and saw the amount of money he had won all she could do was say oh my god oh my god oh my god and when he asked her you know what are you looking at what happened she just goes big and so when he got home tayeb handed is this that just slip to his wife okay is this just a positive story is that all this is yo what's up ssj pdg what's up is this big big is this just a positive story for once is that all this is? And on it was the amount of money that he had won. He was the jackpot winner. He had won 315. Oh my God. Yo. Hey, yo, what the fuck? That is a lot of fucking money. Holy shit. <coughs> Sheesh! Yo, can I have a bit? God damn. Million dollars. Tayeb would say that he and his wife and his kids all laughed and cried and celebrated in the kitchen all night. And within a couple of days, Tayeb had left his job, he retired, and he had paid off all of his family's debts. And at his press conference for the New Jersey lottery, he was quoted as saying, I love orange juice now. Okay, I, I see why he made the story. I get it. It's just like, if his wife didn't tell him to go back. So I guess because of them being frugal, it paid off. All right. That, 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 that's a nice positive story. We never get positive stories on Ballin. <coughs> It's not a possible story that mysterious machine sent a missile to his house. It, it yeah, it's true. It was it was a strange machine. So who knows what it was for? Now where's the death? Am I right? In 2012, someone went on Reddit and asked people to share no! their personal glitch. Not Reddit. 
in the Matrix stories. A glitch in the Matrix story is any story where something totally unusual happens that doesn't have a logical <coughs> explanation. So these are true stories, Sorry. or at least purported to be true. They're first-hand accounts, and they're very popular on Reddit. And so this particular query on Reddit got very popular. It went totally viral. And so there were thousands and thousands of stories commented down below. So lots of people gave their glitch in the Matrix story. Now, the top comments, so the top stories that were given, were really, really interesting. But by far, the best response, the best glitch in the Matrix story, got no attention at all. True it was stories at on the Reddit. bottom of 14,000 plus comments. I this story, story, which was written by a person who just went by Sarah X11, should have gone completely viral. It should have been the top comment by far. But for whatever reason, it wasn't. And so now, 10 years later, no one really knows about it. While we don't know for sure if Sarah X11's story is true, as it is just an unverified first-hand account, what we do know is that this was the first story that Sarah X11 had ever posted to Reddit about glitches in the Matrix. The majority of her Reddit activity consisted of liking cute pictures of cats and dogs. So this person, this user, was not on Reddit for clout. All Bro, you want to know my glitch in the Matrix story that happened? Uh, what was it two nights ago? So where I live now, we do have planes that fly over our house sometimes, because there's an airport, uh, like what, like an like thirty minutes that way or something. But the thing is, when a plane flies over, it's not that loud. You know what I mean? It's like you could hear it way far away. Like you just hear that like that light sound, and if you're inside the house, you can't hear it. Right? <clears throat> it was three in the morning. And my wife could say this too. And there was just an insanely loud, like sounded like a plane was literally like in inches above our house, like insanely loud. And, uh, <clears throat> and the thing is, is when a plane flies over, it's like you hear it and then it goes away. You know what I mean? Like it's like there and then it's gone. It doesn't last long, but it, it sounded like something was literally hovering and it was just insanely loud at three in the morning. And like I, w I opened the window and I looked outside and it's just even louder outside. And I was like, what the fuck is this noise? I was like half asleep when it was happening. <clears throat> and um, alien spaceship, invisible UFO could be aliens. But I was just confused because it I, I, I looked, you know, up at the wit like uh, I stuck my head out the window, looked up. There's nothing there. But it's just fucking loud sound. Like, and it was definitely, like, right above our heads. And it, it lasted for, like, a good, like, two minutes. And I was just like, uh, we thought it was, like, something in our house. Like, something, like a, like a, I don't know, like the AC vent broke or something like that. It was just making a really loud noise. But it was louder outside. And then after a couple minutes, it just, it gradually disappeared. And then that was it. Like, I was just like, all right, I guess I'll go to bed. Like, I was just like, what the fuck? No, it was vibration, too. It wasn't just noise. It was like, like, you could feel it. It was, it was definitely very ominous. And and I, I will say this, but I don't think it was this. I think it was different planes. Because I looked out the window... And pretty far away, there were like three lights in the sky that were like in a triangle, but I just assumed those were just different planes or something. But aliens. Aliens. Also, when Sarah X11 <coughs> posted her story in this Reddit thread, there were already thousands and thousands of comments posted. Aliens. So if they were trying to get recognized through this story, they chose the worst post to do it on. If you want to get recognized in a comment section and be a top comment, typically you have to it be was one of the Jimmy very driving first by, comments yeah. after this thing gets posted. And so she's posting after thousands and thousands of people have done this. So in my mind, it seems like this post by Sarah X11, this story, has got to be true. And even if it isn't true, it's one of the coolest stories I've come across on the internet that is guaranteed okay. to give you goosebumps. Okay, here we go. I better, I better get so many goosebumps, dude.
In 2006, a 20 year old woman named Sarah started having some very strange dreams about a woman named Aurora. She had a very striking face with sharp features and long black hair. Now, her dreams varied. Sometimes Sarah was in a crowd of people, or she was at her office, or she. Okay, I'll admit the whole uh, premonition in your dreams, I, I feel like that's real. There's too many instances of that. Where like you have a dream, like a constant dream of something that is going to happen or a person that you're going to meet and then it happens. I feel like that happens She a lot. was just alone in a room, but in all of her dreams, Aurora would always show up. Either she Deja would vu? How is it deja vu if you have dreams about it before it happens? Act with Aurora and they would speak, but Sarah could never remember what they actually spoke about. Or Aurora would just be in the crowd or in the Spidey background senses, just yeah. watching Sarah. Now, <clears throat> she had these dreams enough that eventually yeah, Sarah Amy's began had them to think, before. I must know someone named Aurora. I must have come across this person and now they're just kind of manifesting in my brain at night when I'm sleeping. And so she began going through her older posts on social media to look in pictures of her and of her friends to see if there was a woman with striking features and long black hair that was this Aurora person in her dream. But after looking through hundreds and hundreds of pictures, she couldn't find any indication that she had met this person, at least not according to her social media. Media. And so Sarah began just going on Google and typing yeah. in Aurora, long black hair, striking features. Has anybody dreamed about this? To see if there were people talking about having this type of dream on the internet. But she had no luck. Eventually, after about three or four months of having these strange dreams that... Yeah, deja vu is like when a short-term memory gets logged into your long-term memory. If I, I, I think I've heard about that before where it's like, like, you know, something happens and then instead of it like feeling like, you know, it gets, you know what I'm saying? Like, like it gets put in your long-term memory where it feels like it happened a long time ago or it feels like it's already happened. That Aurora was in, Aurora <laughs> stopped showing up in Sarah's dreams. It was like it suddenly was all over. And so very quickly, Sarah just kind of forgot about it. A few years later, on Halloween night 2009, Sarah and a friend pulled off the highway into a gas station. They had been out with some friends celebrating Halloween, and now they were making their way back home. Sarah pulled into an empty spot right in front of the convenience store, and after they were parked, Marka Sarah Giga. and her friend got out, they went inside, they got some snacks and drinks, and then they came back outside and climbed back into Sarah's car. A few moments later, Sarah had turned her car on, she had backed out, and she had driven past all of the gas stations pumps and she was making her way towards the single lane strip of road that merged out onto the highway it was how anybody who got into this gas station got back out onto the highway and so yeah. as she's getting closer to the entrance of this short merge road her phone suddenly rings what happens next occurred over a span of just a few seconds so it might seem like this is over several minutes but this all happened pretty much simultaneously so she's pulling up to the entrance of this merge road, her cell phone rings, and because there was no one behind her, it was not a busy night, Sarah decides to just stop her car, put it in park so she can safely take this phone call. And so she stops her car pretty much right in front of the entrance to this merge road, and she picks up her phone, she okay, looks that's at the number, safe. and she doesn't recognize it, but she picks it up anyways, and she says, hello. There was silence on her phone, and as Sarah is saying, hello, is anybody there? Another car from the gas station pulls up right behind Sarah's car and they start honking their horn immediately. They're in a huge rush. And so Sarah, who's totally embarrassed that she's blocking traffic, she hangs up the phone, she puts it down, she puts her car back in drive and she hits the gas. But this driver behind her is apparently in such a rush, they're so impatient that they actually swerved around her, driving on the dirt off to the side of the road just to get around her. And then they sped off down the merge road back onto the highway. And literally seconds later, another car that was already on the highway, a silver Honda Civic, lost control and smashed into this car that had just passed Sarah's car. So there's this huge car accident literally Bruh. right in front of Sarah and her friend who have now stopped the car most They're right drivers the to be honest road, looking 
Dude, that's karma right there, man. This horrible accident that they narrowly escaped. Sarah put her car back in park, she picked up her phone, and she called the police. When the police showed up a few moments later, they took down it's Sarah gonna be the and girl. her friend's version of events. And then a little while later, after the ambulances had left and after the two cars had been pulled off of the highway, one of the police officers pulled Sarah aside and told her that the driver of the Honda Civic and the driver of the car that had swerved around her had both been killed in the accident. Shocked, the only thing Sarah could think to do was to call back that number she didn't recognize that had effectively stopped her from getting onto the highway and maybe even stopped her from being hit by that Honda Civic. And so okay. she wanted to talk to this person and thank them for saving her life. But when she... The phone's going to ring inside one of the cars. The phone's going to ring inside one of the cars. Ready? Called the number back. The person did not pick up. However, it went to her voicemail. And it said, Hi, you've reached Aurora. Leave your name and number after the beep. Sarah could not believe it. She said she had never felt goosebumps like that in her entire life. The next day, Sarah tried calling the number again, and this time the woman, Aurora, answered the phone. The two oh, got to talking, okay. and Sarah explained her crazy dreams, and now this crazy car crash thing, and how it's all connected. And Aurora would tell Sarah, like, that's amazing. This is a crazy story you're telling me, except... I didn't call you last night. I have no idea how you got my phone number. Monka and so at Giga. the end of this phone call, the two oh. women really had not reached any sort of explanation for how oh. this came to be, how they came to be talking. But they ultimately just said, okay, hey, you know, thanks and uh, best of luck to you. And Aurora then entered the After chat. After the call was over, Sarah found herself just kind of sitting there, not really sure how to react to what had just happened. It was such a totally bizarre thing that she had just been through over the past 24 hours. <laughs> and then if you include the dream, this has been a multi-year long thing. And so on a whim, Sarah just opens up her Facebook account and she plugs in Aurora's full name because Aurora had given her her full name on this phone call they had just had. And when she looked at her phone, when the results came in, Sarah nearly fainted. Right at the top of the results page was this woman, Aurora's Facebook account. And her profile and picture exactly showed like her. her face. And when Sarah looked at her face, it was the exact she same face pissed. she had seen so many times in her dreams. It was the same Aurora with the striking features and long... And then... She finds out Aurora's been dead for five years. It ends like a luxury pranks video. Aurora's been dead for 10 years. What do you mean? Aurora doesn't exist. Black hair. The woman in her dreams ah! was the woman who called her and saved her life. I'm lost. On the spot. evening of January. Yeah, that, that was slightly confusing, but... <coughs> January 6th, 1982. A man named Harold Bray, who was a sheriff in Jefferson God County, damn. Colorado, which is an area just west of... Den Dude, okay, that's a real man when you take a picture with a pipe. You know what I mean? All right, we're going to take your headshot uh, for the newspaper. Oh, let me get my pipe. Let me get my pipe. All right, all right, ready. Let me get my pipe. Denver what the fuck? arrived at the Denver airport. Harold was running late because his commute into the airport had been treacherous because Denver and the surrounding areas were all getting pounded by his airline is fighting After running for its into life. the terminal and getting checked in and getting through security. <laughs> he made it to his gate right as they were boarding the plane. Feeling very relieved, Harold joined the queue of other people that were getting on the ramp to go down into the plane. And then <clears> just a couple of minutes later, he stepped on board and he found his seat, which was located at the front right side of the plane. He sat down in his seat, he buckled in, and then he grabbed an in-flight magazine from the back pocket of the chair in front of him, and he waited for takeoff. Fifteen minutes later, as the plane was rumbling down the runway at full speed, Harold looked out the window. And so as the plane began to lift off the ground, 
He watched as the city lights of Denver slowly faded away as they got higher and higher up. Very but descriptive. just before their plane entered into the thick cloud that was hovering over that stretch of Colorado, Harold noticed something very odd out of his window. Located just west of Jefferson County, which is where Harold worked, was a 22-mile stretch of road that cut through the Rocky Mountains. It was called the Guanella Pass, and it took motorists up and over this 11,000-foot mountain pass. Now, Pretty this hard. was a beautiful scenic drive that Harold was very familiar with, but this road was not maintained in the wintertime. So if there was snow on the ground, uh, you simply could not get through this pass. It was impossible. Yet, as Harold looked out of his plane window down to Jefferson County below, and he kind of scanned his way west up into the Rockies, he saw there were clearly a car's headlights on the Guanella Pass. And so Harold's thinking to himself, why in the world would anyone be on the Guanella Pass in the middle of this huge snowstorm? It didn't make any sense. But as Harold watched this vehicle, he saw what was going on. Whoever was in this vehicle was holding a flashlight out of their window, and they were shining the light straight up into the sky, flashing it on and off, signaling oh, distress. This motorist was trapped. Harold knew the likelihood of another plane happening to fly over this area and looking down and seeing those lights and recognizing them for what they were, an emergency, were slim to none. So Harold knew if he didn't act quickly, this motorist was doomed. And so Harold quickly got up from his seat, he climbed over the person next Calling to him, aliens, he got into the yes. aisle, and he waved down the attendant, and then after the attendant ran over, Harold explained who he was and why his experience as a sheriff told him that this was an emergency. And so the attendant took him very seriously, they turned around, they went into the cockpit, and they told the pilots, and the pilots used their radios to call down to authorities on the ground, <laughs> and then just How a couple can of minutes see this later... From a plain view i mean it's not that hard i mean if you're like way up and like you know okay if you know the terrain and you know where to look it probably wouldn't be that hard to find it you know what i mean is he gonna jump yes fire department yeah. was dispatched he, dude he's gonna jump with a parachute jump all the way and do like a couple flips land on top of the car and then attach a hook to it Swing it around like this and launch it all the way to the plane. Catch it, wrap it around the car. It's going to lift the car with the people in it, and then it's going to put it back down safely. He's fucking Batman, is what I'm saying. Yes. ...to Guanella Pass. Fifteen minutes later, <laughs> the fire chief, a man named Dave Montoya, no rocket who was thrusters. driving in a four-wheel drive... Dude, he doesn't need rocket thrusters. His full, powerful legs will keep him safe. He will land like he, he could jump 10 miles in the air, bro. SUV arrived at the start of this 22 mile stretch of mountain pass. And as they're driving through the whipping snow, he sees up ahead the headlights of the stranded vehicle. And so he drives right up alongside this vehicle, which was a small pickup truck that had clearly slid off the road and gotten stuck in a big snowbank. But he is vengeance. And so Dave, he parks his SUV, he hops out, and he rushes over to the driver's side window of this vehicle. And inside was a terrified looking 30 year old man named Alan Phillips, who was a mechanic who lived in the Denver area. Now, at the time, it was the middle of the night. It's negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit oh my outside. God. The winds are whipping, Sheesh. the snow is coming down, and Alan only had on a light jacket and some jeans and a small blanket wrapped around him. So had Harold not spotted his flashlight SOS signal from the plane, it's almost guaranteed that Alan would have died that night from hypothermia. And so this when Alan so turned menacing. and saw Dave standing there, his rescuer, Alan began crying tears of joy and thanking God that he was going to survive. When Dave asked Alan what happened, Alan, who was slightly intoxicated, told Dave that he had gone out drinking at a bar, and then when it was time to come home, he had stupidly decided to drive through the Guanella Pass back to his home, forgetting that this particular stretch of road was not maintained. During what an the idiot! When Dave asked Alan how what he an got idiot. this really deep bruise on his cheek, you know, he assumed he got it from crashing off the side of the road, Alan smiled a kind of embarrassed smile and said, no, actually, after I got stuck, I needed to urinate, and so 
I got out of the vehicle and I walked a few paces away from my truck and I went to the Did he trip and fall? Bathroom. And then when I turned to walk back, the Why snow is he telling was this so part? Blinding, I couldn't actually see my truck. <clears throat> and I ran to go find it again because I didn't want to be trapped out in the snow. And I ran into the truck face first. And so my cheek hit the door of the truck. And so Dave, he just smiled and said, Alan, you are one lucky man. Over the next few days, local His newspapers in Colorado and flow. some national newspapers ran headlines about the miracle at Guanella Pass. However, as it would turn out, that headline would not age well. 38 years later, in oh, there's more in 2020, it was discovered. Is he the evil grandpa? That Alan had lied to Dave <laughs> about why he was in Guanella Pass. The oh, no. Oh, no. Truth was, earlier in the evening that Alan would eventually get stuck. Who said his photo looked menacing? Oh, man, you called it. He had you murdered two hitchhikers near Breckenridge, Colorado, roughly 50 miles from the Guanella Pass. Both of these murders had gone cold, but in late 2020, DNA evidence can Get it, chat? Both of the murderers have gone cold. Because he was out in a blizzard. It is gone cold. Okay, I'll Connected stop. Alan to both cases. Several hours before Alan got rescued, he picked up 22-year-old Annette Schnee, who was hitchhiking, and after she got into his truck, it's believed he held her at gunpoint and then put zip-tie handcuffs on her wrists, and then we don't really know what happened next, but I at don't some point know. that night, Annette was taken out of the vehicle and led into the woods, and she was shot in the back, and she was left face down in a stream. A couple of hours after he killed Annette, Alan picked up another hitchhiker, 29-year-old Barbara Oberholzer, and when she got into his truck, it's believed he did the same thing. He held her at gunpoint and put her in zip tie handcuffs. However, Barbara was able to break out of her restraints. Oh, it's shit. believed she struck Alan in the cheek, which oh, is why shit. he got that deep bruise on his cheek. And then she <laughs> leapt out of his car and started running. But Alan got out, chased her down, and shot her in the chest, killing her. And then he dumped her body off the side of this cliff. Dude. Remember when, like, hitchhiking was so popular that people could just, like, pick people up and kill them just for fun? Like, hitchhiking was such a big thing back then that people, like, murderers, it was just like a, like a, what's, what's the word I'm thinking of? It's like the clearance aisle. No. What's a better word for it? An all-you-can-eat buff. Okay, I need to stop. That's, that's not, that's not, I don't like that. <laughs> down into the snowbank below. So the only reason Alan Burger got stuck buffet. in Guinella Pass is because he was attempting to flee the area where he committed these murders. And he likely just didn't understand how dangerous this pass was. And so shortly after turning onto it, his truck slid off the road and he got stuck. In February of- How did anyone ever think hitchhiking was safe? Well, I don't know. I think back then there was this weird concept that people, because I, I think it's mainly because, you know, we didn't have the internet and like when bad things happened, people weren't really that aware. Um, but, you know, unless it was local, if something locally bad ha happened and you'd be aware. So people just had this like weird trust of everyone where they were just like, oh, like they just believed that if you're going to get picked up by someone, then they're probably just going to be a nice person. You know what I mean? 2021, Alan, who was 70 years old at the time and still living in the Denver area, was finally arrested for these two murders, and he is currently awaiting trial. Assuming he did it, that Alan killed these two women, <sighs> we don't know what his motivations were. It's not clear. He hasn't said. And... Yeah, that's true. The media definitely tried to hide all the bad things from people. I guess just, I don't, I don't know. Media was very um, filtered back then. Where everything, you know, was nice. Everything was great. Nothing bad really happened. But now it's like, since we have the internet, we know all of the terrible things all of the time. Even if the media doesn't cover it because, you know, someone's going to post it on Twitter or something. Yeah, people didn't even lock their doors back then. The 70s were wild.
Everyone was either super trusting or a murderer. True. And yeah, we also true. don't know if that's why so many of these like huge serial murderers that kill multiple people are from like you know the seventies, eighties, and maybe a little bit in the nineties, but. <laughs> it was mostly in the 70s and the 80s. There are potentially other victims. So that's going to do it. If you got something out of today's episode and you haven't done this already, Dude, please that sucks, man. There's still things swept under the rug today. Yeah, I know. It's just not as, you know, back, back then people could get away with it all the time. Now it's time to walk away I hope you enjoyed your stay Did you laugh or cry or maybe subscribed? I'll thank you either way You know I will miss you I hope you return Tell your friend or your mother to get me more views, please.